Hi everybody, I'm David Baber and today I will show you how to use a free program for editing PDF documents. That's something we all could use at some point. So it's a program that's called PDF Escape. Now PDF Escape is a free open source program, so it's completely web-based. You do not have to log in and create an account but there are paid versions of the program that feature additional options. But the free version where you don't have to create an account is also contains plenty of options that you'll be able to use. So for today, we're going to show you how to use the free version where you do not have to sign in. Now, if you look at the main screen right here, this is what PDF Escape looks like when you first go in to access the, show, the website you'll go to this website, www.pdfescape.com slash windows with another backslash. And that's how you'll access it. And that's the page right here is where you will go when you click on that URL. So to access the free version of it without signing in, and see so you can sign in and create an, a free account. And the, the benefit of doing that is if you have some PDFs that you want to keep in the uh, program. In other words, when you close the program out, it will maintain those for you. That would be the reason to sign up and create an account. And it is free to sign up. Now, if you do not sign up and create an account, then any documents that you load into PDF will disappear as soon as you close the program out. So what you'll do is after you do the editing, you'll save the documents to your computer and then close the program out. And that way you have a copy of it. So the only reason for creating an account is if you want to maintain a document without having to lose it. So let's click on free online to access the free version of it. takes a moment for it to load sometimes. All right, now here are the options you have when you go into the free version. You can create a new PDF document from scratch. This is handy if you're creating a test, a quiz, or an assignment, or if you're just creating one of your own that you want to insert text, you can insert pictures, you can insert a link from a website, but that's the option you'll want if you're creating one. Now, most of us will probably be editing an existing PDF document. That seems to be the demand we have in most cases. So you'll want to click this upload PDF to PDF Escape to pull in a document that you already have saved on your computer. Now, if it's a PDF that's online on a website, you can click this load PDF from the internet and then you can paste, copy and paste the URL into this box and load it straight in. Now I'm going to pull one from my computer, so I'm going to click upload to PDF escape and here you can choose the file. And again, it might take a moment for it to to load. Okay, now I'm going to pull one in from my documents and let's pull in this tutorial on find it here. It disappeared on me. Here we go. I'm going to pull in this document right here. And the document I'm pasting in here is an eight page document. And we're going to say, for instance, I want to move some pages around and maybe even take a page or two out of the document and then save the new copy. All right. Now on this dashboard, there are three tabs here. We're starting off. There's an insert annotate a page. Now the insert tab, which is what we're on right now, here are the commands under that. You can click text to add a text box to a document. In other words, say here's a page and say I want to add a text box. So I've clicked text and I'm going to uh, create a box right here. I'm going to click and drag it and then say, for instance, I want to add some extra text right here. And then I can 
highlight it and make it, uh, I can bold it if I want to. I can then put it in italics. You can even underline it and you can change the color on it as well right here. See right there, I've inserted the text box on there. Now I'm gonna take that off of there. So I'm going to go up here and you can use this undo action anytime to remove anything that you don't want to keep on the document. Now, if I want to insert an image, I can choose a file from the computer or upload one that's already on um, a website or that I've saved on the computer. I'm going to cancel that. You can also add a link. You can put in a URL and put that uh, on their document. Now, if you have a mistake that you want to uh, correct, you can also click the whiteout option and say I wanted to take out these uh, this one word here we'll say we'll take out the word lower so I'm going to click over that and see it takes it right out now let me take that box off of there somehow that box decided to appear okay now freehand, if I click that, this enables me to have a text or to write freely on the screen with my mouse. And as you can see, I'm writing red lines on the screen right here. So I'm going to undo that. But that allows you to do freehands if you wanted to write um, something on the screen there. You can sign documents with it by using freehand. Now the form field is good if you're creating an assignment, a test, or a quiz, and you want to add multiple choice answers to your questions. Let's look right here. We have on the drop box, you have a text, you can add a paragraph, you can have a checkbox, and here's what the checkbox looks like. I'm going to click and draw it right here on the screen. And see, when you click, you just add additional boxes like that. So want to undo. You can also just highlight and click delete on your screen to remove one. Let's get these off of here. Alrighty, now we're going to also show you what else is here. There's also a drop menu. See you have a little drop menu right here then you can type your text out from the side of it click that and add your options of answers. I'm going to undo that. And then more, if there are actually some more commands available, you can draw a line, you can add an arrow, a rectangle, a circle, and another check mark. All right, now here's the annotate option. You can put a sticky note in if you so desire. See right here, it's indicating a sticky note pointing in this case right here. If you want to move it up, you can. you can put that. You can see you can drag this around. If there's a specific place you want to call attention to, then the sticky note will open and you can insert a note of any sort on here. And then we can, of course, undo that if we need to. Alrighty, there's also a highlight option. You can highlight right here where I have, say, click the clock and see now it's highlighted and it draws attention to that particular uh, piece of text. I want to undo that. You can uh, strike out if you need to say, okay, just disregard this whole part right here and see it draws a red line through it. And this is good if you're updating a document from an old one and you can say, okay, disregard those instructions. And of course, you can underline to underline right here and you can change the color you can make it red, or orange, yellow, green, blue, however color you want or black, just like that. And you can add a rectangle and uh, or an oval in there as well. Now the page tab, this is the part you'll be using probably the most because this enables you to move pages around or delete pages. So let's click down here to page three. 
Now let's say I want to switch page three and page two. I want to flip flop them. So I'm going to move, click move right here. And we're going to say, okay, we've got page three highlighted and I'm going to move the page to page two. And then I'm going to click select. And then as you can see, it turns the two pages around. If you wanted to do that. And then you can click undo to move it back. Now, if I want to delete a page, then we're going to uh, highlight, we're going to click on the page that we want to remove. And you can scroll down by clicking this gray bar. Let's go down to page six. And let's say I want to remove page six completely. So I'm going to click it and it's going to be highlighted in red. And then I'm going to click delete. And then it'll ask me, are you sure you want to delete this page? Yes. And then what you will do then is once you are done, you will save this page. And then let me make a note that when you uh, place a document into PDF Escape, you will not alter your original document that you have saved on your computer. This copy that you are putting in PDF Escape is the only part that will be affected. So if you delete a page, you move a page around, you will not affect your original document. You will only be affecting this copy. So when you put it in here, it makes a copy for you because then we're going to save this as a separate copy. So your original will still be intact. Now, if I wanted to rotate the page to the left, I can do that. I want to undo it. And if you want to rotate to the right, you can also turn them that way. Are you sure you want to save this document and choose a file to a pen? I'm going to say no right here. Now you can also crop certain pages. Say I want to crop out this part of the page or this part of the page right here. And I'm going to say OK. And see, now the page is a lot smaller than it was. You can do that to make individual pages different sizes on the document. Well, I'm going to undo that. And we have more. And you can also click this Restore All. And if I wanted to put that page back, I can click Restore All and put the document right back the way I had it. So there's always a way to undo it. You can restore all, or of course, always you can go to the undo option. Now, whenever you are done with the document and you want to save it, then you'll come over here and you've got a couple of options. Now, this will save your changes within PDF Escape, but it does not save it to your computer. This only just saves what you have done and keeps it from uh, changing on you. Now, when you want to upload this document or download, I should say, to your computer, you're going to click this green button. We're going to save and download it. And it'll put it down here in the lower left hand corner of your screen. And then you can click on that and your altered document will be right here on your computer. And then if you need to save it under a different file name, you can do that. Sometimes it takes a moment for it to open up. In most cases, it moves faster than this, but on my occasion here, my computer is just a little bit slow, so bear with me on it. Anyway, there it is. And see right here, I, I've taken out that part that um, I whited out on the document. So here's the actual document. And then, of course, now it's saved on your computer. All right. So I'm going to close this part out. Now, when you're using the free version of PDF Escape, you can use multiple documents. If you need to go and upload another document, you can... Uh, click right here to upload and you can go right on and move to a new one. Now, after a while, if you keep uploading new documents and new documents without closing PDF Escape, they do pile up. So you want to go up here to the recent tab. 
and then you can see all the ones that I have done right here. Now it's telling me that it will keep these for one week. Today's December 15th, so it keeps it for one week in there if I have an account. Now, after a while, I'm going to need to remove these from the queue. So just go to that uh, recent documents and then click the red X right here where it says remove document. And you can also duplicate them if you want to, but I'm going to remove them. Say OK. When you're doing the free version of this uh, program, it will allow you, I think it's 10, up to 10 of these that you can put in at one time. And then when you reach the limit of 10, the program will remind you, you have documents here that need to be deleted before you can go on. So just go to that recent and delete them out. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my screen where I started. So this is where we were with create a new document and upload. So that's some of the basic commands of PDF Escape and how it works. There's a whole lot to this program, but you can go in there and play around with it. And if you have any questions, just feel free to email me at dbaber at wcs.k12.va.us.